Now let us explain the real CPU schedule that has been used by current Linux operating system. It is called Completely Fair Scheduling, CFS. Uh, it is designed for efficiency. Efficiency means it is quick to pick up the next process to run. Um, different from the round robin or multi-level feedback queue, its time slice is not fixed. Time slice is not fixed. Then um, it adjusts the priority of process based upon its nice value. And it uses efficient data structure. It uses red black tree for efficient search, insertion, and deletion of a process. Red black tree is a, 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 a search structure based upon its uh, red black tree is a search tree which guarantees a maximum depth from uh, the root to the leaf uh, corresponds to the um, two times log n. There are two basic concepts. First one is virtual runtime. And then second one is scheduled latency. Virtual runtime is uh, um, is a time how long the process has been executing. It's a per versus variable, and it increases with respect to the physical time when it runs. And the most important thing is that CPU will pick up the process with the lowest virtual runtime to run next. Scheduled latency is um, the total length of an interval in which every process gets uh, own CPU. So um, let's, we'll go into this point in the next slide. So process time slice corresponds to scheduled latency divided by the number of processes. So here, um, at the beginning, there are four CPU processes. This is scheduled latency. So it is fixed as some value by default is 48 milliseconds. However, this is the length of the time slice. So uh, when there is four processes, the length of time slice corresponds to skit latency divided by four. But if two processes finish and leaves the system, then because there's only two processes, the length of the time slice increases by the factor of two. However, um, the CFS scheduler defines the term minimum granularity. Um, it avoids frequent contact switch. Because um, so far in the previous slide, um, we defined the length of the time interrupt or length of the time slice is the length of uh, scheduled latency divided by number of processes. However, it is possible that number of processes getting larger and larger and then this total length of time slice, this one, the length of time slice getting shorter and then it may cause uh, extremely frequent context switch that will be very bad for the overall system performance. So CFS scheduler defined a notion of minimum granularity as a minimum time slice. The minimum time slice is a six millisecond. Um, it is used to ensure that not too much time is spent on scheduling overhead because when there are too many processes still running. Um, there is um, a notion of nice as we have seen before, but um, instead of directly applying nice value to the CPU in computing the CPU priority, a CFS scheduler defines a certain table that defines a weight value for each nice value. This is the table. So it defines um, 40 integers um, for each nice value from negative 20 to plus 19. And then each nice value is mapped as a weight. Let's see how the weight value is used. Uh, weight value, the, the niceness is used to compute the time slice as follows. So um, in normal um, in normal situation, the time slice is the value of skit latency divided by the number of processes in the system. However, if 
uh, if some process has higher uh, nice value, then the length of the time slice is weighted as such. For example, let's say uh, there are two processes A and B, and A has nice value of minus 5, and then B has nice value of 0. In that case, the weight of minus 5 is 3121. And the weight of nice value of 0 corresponds to 1024. So, according to this formula, according to this formula, process A will approximately get um, three-fourths of entire time slice. And time slice length is 48 milliseconds in, by default. And then um, you have 3100 for 3100 weight value for process A and 1000 weight value for process B. So uh, if you consider time slice for process A, it'll correspond to 3121 plus 1024 and 3121 corresponds to 3 over 4. So uh, if you multiply it by the length of time slice or length of skit latency, then that all ends up at 36 milliseconds. So uh, if you have a, a lower nice value, then you can have a larger share of the time slice. Let us ex explain how the weight value accepts the way the variant time is obtained. Uh, first, it calculates actual runtime. And then scales the actual runtime inversely by the weight of the process. So if you have a higher weight, then your VRUN time increases very slowly. This is a formula. The new VRUN time is computed by the VRUN time plus originally was uh, increased by runtime. However, if you have a weight, then your VRUN, your runtime is uh, scaled inversely with respect to your weight. For example, if process A has nice value of minus 5 and then its weight is 3121. And then the process B its nice value 0, then weight of it is 1024. Um, weight of process 0 is 3121, so um, the cumulative value corresponds to 3121 over 3121. But here, for process B, the runtime increases three times faster than process A does because it has 3121 divided by 1024. CFS scheduler uses red black tree to maintain the ready queue. It is a balanced binary tree, and the search insert overhead is bounded by order of log n. Um, Red Black Tree allows CFS scheduler to efficiently find a process with minimum virtual runtime. And this data structure is for uh, this data structure is for read list. If a process has woken up after a long period of sleep, then because the process hasn't been executed for a long period of time, it probably has significantly small virtual time then there's a chance that that process monopolizes CPU for a certain period of time. To avoid that kind of situation, um, the CPU scheduler sets the variant time of the process to the minimum value found in the tree when it wakes up. Um, but uh, at the same time, it is not problem free. In this case, a process that sleep for a short period of time frequently do not get their fair share of CPU. That is a drawback of CFS scheduler.